Thank you, Mark, for joining me and uh, sharing your, your path. Um, you've been very busy recently, <laughs> the, traveling around the world, releasing the movie Dost and uh, working still at your um, Iboga Soul. We just uh, had a few minutes ago a conversation with Patrick, who shared us a little bit about um, the work. And tell us about the, this whole concept of the movie, how this uh, came about and uh, how did it evolve? Um, well, I was actively working with Iboga in Canada, um, and I guess you know the directors, Tyler and Nick, decided that they've heard about um, psychedelic um, therapy can help with uh, addictions. So he has a friend who was um, in need of some sort of help, and they went out and discovered that um, you know they were going to attempt to, to try and microdose her. So the movie went on for about five months, where they were using psilocybin mushrooms and they kind of opened up different concepts into Ibogaine, they saw a withdrawal and it hit a, it hit a dead wall where it became very difficult and they reached out to me at that point because I was an active um, Iboga provider in Canada that was willing to go on camera and perform the treatment. Um, and I told them they better change the name from uh, microdose me to macrodose me because, <laughs> because that's not gonna work, like we're gonna be doing things differently. And then um, they changed the name to Dost. We ended up treating um, Adrienne probably over the course of about three weeks, three different sessions. And, you know, it turned out successful. Um, not every time does it turn out successful, but our success rate is really high. Um, but she was also a really good subject because of her, um, she's really intelligent. And I think it comes across in the movie with, match her intelligence, match with her courageousness, really puts together uh, a clear pathway that shows people who are in dire need, you know, that they can offer a, a, an alternative option that's not necessarily available in the wide, wide stream, uh, the mainstream, like, um, offerings. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, and thanks for the, the movie and ex, uh, educational component that comes with it. Uh, if, uh, w what is the plan for you next, like a next project, next step after the movie? Um, well, I think with the movie we realized that, you know, it's wonderful to be able to ex get exposure for what we do to the mainstream. There's so many people out there that, you know, they don't ha have any idea of the possibilities that are that actually literally at their fingertips, right. you know. And then when they do realize it, a lot of people go out and scatter and they want to use it all, but they have no bearing as to what works for what and how to use what to safely and properly. Yes. You know, so like things like this spirit plant conference is, is so important because, you know, for nine years now, you've been innovating, you know, you've been driving a spiritual wedge into society to open up and expose like, the goodness that's available to people. So I think that's kind of where I bogus soul is at, is um, we're toning back our uh, risky sort of procedures that we, we used to do. We're not saying it was risky, it was just more um, yeah, risky <laughs> in Canada, you know, tightening up the ship and starting to like um, focus on like how successful that this treatment can be when used safely. Right. You know? So to create protocols, to create Create protocols, to create, like, so we can actually have this as something people can go in and there's a pathway, like, right. for them to actually get through the healing yeah. and how we can use it. Like, the thing about the movie, the plant medicines, you know, they can be used for so many different things. So a lot of people in the, in the mainstream there, they just kind of maybe see, oh, that's just for someone who's sick, or that's for someone who's got a, a, a head trauma, or someone who's got a, an addiction problem, or someone who you know, has a severe like a child molestation problem, like some sort of problem. But the reality is a lot of these medicines are really good for like solutions and happiness. Mm -hmm. you know? So it's not just for these people who are sick or who need the help. That, they just need it to get out of wherever hole they're in. Mm. So we want to also now start showing that this is for everybody in the population. This is right. for like someone at, like a, at the top of their game that's you know financially successful, family where they're happy with their family, like they've got everything everything in the world going on, and then even go use these psychedelic medicines. It's for it's for humanity, and that's what we want to show. We really want to spread the, the the good word about you know what's available to people, and not be sort of like uh, restricted to this box of thinking. I haven't worked with you directly with the plan, so I don't know exactly your. But my understanding is that you try to bridge both the ceremonial, more kind of traditional way to work with Iboga instead of Ibogaine, and at the same time providing 
nursing, provide, um, uh, uh, train nurses, provide uh, medical uh, backing, provide all of uh, everything else that science can and, and uh, educated uh, medical professional can offer. Uh, tell us more about the difference uh, between, let's say, more traditional way of um, experiencing iboga and more more uh, more Western ways of uh, uh, working with ibogaine. Yeah. So what we're finding is that you know we have Western problems. Mm -hmm. These medicines come in from different places. They're amazingly they work well, but when you just throw them into the Western society, they can. Um, it's like throwing a wrench into an engine. So mostly it's like if you take a car and you bring it to the mechanic and it's got um, a lot of crash damage all over the place, you, you want to have it hooked up, like, and it's a bad analogy in a way, but you want it to be really monitored and everything, fix all the dents and everything, get the, water, the car cleaned and everything else like that, so that then you can take it and look under the hood and see what's the matter with it. Mm. So what, we, what we've learned is that high medical treatment for people who are on um, doing withdrawal management, like it should be just done really medically supervised, so you need ECGs and blood tests so that you know where someone is out there with their body. And you need to know what they're coming in on so that you can use the medicine properly to take them off that. Now once you got someone clean, mm. then what we, we notice is that introducing these traditional values, and what I mean about traditional values is, um, it's traditional ways of thought where the particular Bwiti, it's called the study of life, and it's really it is, it's, it's someone connecting back with their own soul. So if someone's on an addiction where their body is like basically running their mind, their mind is going to be running the show and they're not, there's not going to be much room to hear the voice of spirituality coming through. So we stop the addictions and clean up the body and then there's a faint little voice that's coming through and this is where we've been taught by the African traditions is how to use the medicine to go in to like get rid of all the obstacles, clear the way for someone to see where their soul is, you know, create whatever it is like through forgiveness or um, you know or just not even or just you know saying I won't leave you again and building the trust up back with someone and their own own soul their soul being like their own life themselves and then once we get that reconnected someone can then use their soul as their own sort of global positioning system sort of like a global positioning spirit right. you know and start being able to, to engage in that conversation between them themselves their higher self their soul their better self their good reasoning and then you use that momentum to sort of start manifesting. So then you can talk to your soul and listen what's best for you. Send a signal out, that's what I want. Allow your soul to do a lot of the work and on the physical level, you just be present. Mm -hmm. And you know, your life just starts rolling in. This is all about happiness in life. Right. So it's just getting someone clean, reconnected. And balanced and directed. And, and the traditional ways, they carry all the special codes and stuff necessary to sort of engage that soul back to life. Mm -hmm. You know, fire, the torches, the full spectrum medicine that's like harvested really sustainably with a lot of love. The music, which is really important because the, mu the music has come from the medicine teaching, right. the traditions, and then all the good knowledge about respectful things and integrity to pass on into your life. Beautiful. That's kind of like... So it's the, the name of your company is Iboga Soul. Iboga Soul. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you for, again for, yeah. for sharing it. And for those who are interested to find out more and learn more, yeah. how would they find you? Um, they find me at ibogasoul.com. You can go and look. You can uh, write to us at info at ibogasoul.com. And if you're know, interested, write us in and fill out a big uh, five-page application. And we can give you a great assessment off that. You know, what you, what you need to look for, how we can do it. And otherwise, we have the movie dosemovie.com. That's kind of playing all over the world right now. And then there's a trailer on YouTube. And we're just getting started here. Beautiful. Well, thanks again for yep. your contribution and support. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.